Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast with Hype. This is episode 90. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building. This is pretty much a lifelong situation with this guy right here. Introduce yourself to the audience. What's up, y'all? My name is Neef. He didn't go high, Neef, this time. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> y'all already know what it is, though. Uh, Custom Hustle World, Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter, Custom Jerseys, Jackets, T-shirts, Sweatsuits. You want your own logo on something, we can customize that, too. It's going to cost you a little extra. The jackets you design yourself, they're one of one unless you buy three or four. Uh, The jerseys, you pick the names, numbers, colors, and all of that. Football, basketball, hockey, and baseball, all available. Kid sizes available and all these things, too. Also got the exclusive Christmas joints, you know what I'm saying, in case you don't want to get into those type joints. Um, At H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. At H2H Cleaning, we do cleanups, cleanouts, roofing, plumbing, HVAC, uh, flooring, and carpeting. You name it, we could pretty much get it done. Uh, this is a tri-state area situation, but if you make it worth my while, I will slide. Uh, E-Block Radio Network, every Monday, 2 o'clock, E-Block Radio Network. GFT Radio Network, Tuesdays, 2 o'clock. 216 to Blend, 12 midnight, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. That's on Wednesdays, uh, 216 to Blend. Thursday is WTNUPhilly.com at 1230. I say Podcast Radio Network, Friday, 10 a.m., THC Media. Saturday at 10 a.m., Sundays, wide open. West Coast, what's happening? We need to get out there. All right, this is episode 90. I got a story to tell. Neef hit me. He got a topic he wanted to talk about. And this is a uh, difficult joint that goes on. So, you know, let's open up the floor and let Neef run the situation today. Neef, talk to us. All right, so what's up, y'all? Like, uh five years ago i lost a baby mom to a drug overdose and like it was on some i'm at a funeral i got a phone call from my youngest son mom that my oldest son mom had passed away they don't know each other so it's no reason for her to like come to me with this on an angle or anything you see what i'm saying with arterial motors because chicks play like that Right, you see what I'm saying? Ain't like we beefing or nothing. I'm like I said, I'm at a funeral. Matter of fact, I'm at my folks' grandpa funeral. So when she called me with it, like I'm like it take me back because of what she's saying. So I tell her I'm gonna call her back. So I call my mom like, "Hey, yo, mom, I just got a phone call. Like my baby mom died." So she like, "Neef, like you sure?" I'm like, "Mom, like." This person that called me, like, ain't playing games. What do you see what I'm saying? So I hang up from my mom. Now I'm trying to do my research on it. Like, what happened? Like, what she killed? Like, what, what's going on? Come to find out she died from a drug overdose. Me and her share a child, one child together. That's her only child in life. At the time, he's six. So I'm like, damn, like, how the fuck am I going to tell my six-year-old son that his mom is no longer here? Because this is a totally different situation. And like you say before, one of my homies died or it's my folks or this is now, this is a rough conversation to have with a six-year-old. Right. Right. Especially, I had my son since he was three months old. So you see what I'm saying? Like, I never told him nothing bad about his mom. No, no, that's not gloss over that. Salute to that. Because most niggas, you're saying, they're not standing up to them type of situations with a three-month-old baby. Oh, and yeah, not at all. Like, baby not baby at hit all. your world like a grenade. So, you know what I'm saying? Definitely salute to you for that one. Let's not gloss over that and act like that was a small fee. Thanks, thanks. But, like, I'm like, damn, like, how, do, how, do, how do you explain this to a six-year-old on a six-year-old level for them to understand? And I'm like, well, look, like, I've always been real with my son. I just got to be real with him. Like, look, your mom passed. He took it well, though. Like, I ain't get into the details with him over it or whatnot. You see what I'm saying? I still ain't know their details all the way. I just know she was no longer here. So my youngest son, mom, family is. Tell me this uh, before you go into that. Did you mm-hmm. take Did he go to Did he go to the funeral? Me or him ain't go. We wasn't invited. Okay. Copy that. Go ahead. 
my uh my youngest son mom family is acquainted with my oldest son mom family so like i'm getting bits and pieces of the story ran through by different people but one thing i can say by as though me and my son wasn't invited we still did everything that we could do from talking to undertakers getting flowers for like everything that we could do as if we were a part of it mm. we did it from a distance though so now okay i'm like what's going on so like i find out like she od off of heroin but she started off taking percocets how old is she at the time 28 it's not a common joint these days for 28 year old not the var community type right times, but go ahead. so i'm like damn like this crazy 28 years old one child whole world ahead of her whole world gone so i'm like damn i'm reaching out to her folks reaching out to her folks like they curving me to the point like I was ready to have static over it, but I'm like, this is bigger than me. You see what I'm saying? Like, I can't go ignorant because they're going ignorant. I got to show a level of maturity. If you, meet like, igno- if you meet ignorance with ignorance in any situation, not even just this one, it's ultimately the goal is to make sure that your son is good. He already right. knows his mom and it's always going to be a void that can't be filled by anything with the loss of your mom especially at six. So now, like you said, if I'm ready to have some static and now you put yourself in a bad situation and now you end up up, or you end up dead or you end up in a situation where you can't take care of him because you need somebody to take care of you. Now, what does that do to him? So you got to always think of the kids first. You got to use that. You know what I'm saying? It's not about me. It's about him. Definitely. So... We uh her funeral come up, I find out about it. So me and my little brother go. Like I go pay my respects, but I don't take my son. You see what I'm saying? I go, I view her, I leave. So now after I leave, it's like doing a footwork of like how this happened, who she is, what you see what I'm saying? Or what hold the, on. what when we're out. Hold on. Before we get to that. Why didn't you take them? See, this is an episode that I'm going to do, so I really don't want to... I don't want to really dive too deep in. No, this bro. Is an episode, no, no, no. This is an episode I got cut. This is an episode that's coming. Me and my man, shout out to uh, More Than A Dad. Me and Dre was just talking about this the other day. <laughs> so we going to make this joint happen. So I don't want to jump too deep, but I want you to, you know... I want you to go through it for me. No doubt. The reason I didn't bring him is because I ain't know the atmosphere. You see what I'm saying? I ain't know how it was going to be. I ain't know how it was going to play out. I ain't. I just didn't feel comfortable taking it. Okay. But like I told everybody, I explain that to him as he get older. But me as a man, as his father, I just didn't feel comfortable taking it because I feel as though I take him something go left, I put my child in danger. Copy. Nah. I mean, this one thing you ain't never got to explain is why you do what you do with your kids. You know what I'm right. saying? Everybody's situation is different. Um, yeah. I just want, I don't want to leave that part of the story out. Well, no, no, it ain't a problem. It ain't yeah. a problem, but, like, that's why I ain't taking, like, but he got her obituary. He the first person to get one. Copy that. So, so he got her obituary. He don't know the cause of death or none of that, but he know his mom no longer here. He go to visit her. He got her obituary. But just, like, the ins and out of it, like, I just ain't dig how they was moving. Like, it was a lot of to me, it was a lot of shaky stuff going on. It's like, like I said, he they first, he her first child. He my first child. But to them, it was like, he's irrelevant right now. How? This 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 girl's first and only child. I mean, everybody in these situations, you talking about a twenty eight year old that has a, a heroin overdose. Uh, that's what you said. It was it was heroin, wasn't it? Yeah, it was heroin. Starting off, by so per- I mean, that's a 
that's a crazy joint to get the phone call. You ain't expecting to get that phone call about your 28 year old. That ain't the excuse nothing that nobody did as far as the baby because it's always about once them babies come, it's about the baby. They didn't ask to be here. You decided uh-huh. to hit something raw and then you created that situation, which is why episode from what was that two weeks ago with the parenting break situation. I don't understand. You decided to do this. That's what you signed right. up for. Right. Uh, so I don't just, I don't even understand that. And I don't even want to really dive too much into that part of the situation. Um, what we really want to kind of stay focused on is, like you said, the drug overdose situation and how these perks and all of that is hitting everybody's different situations. Yeah, definitely. Within, because my baby mom died five years ago. Within four years of my baby mom dying from heroin overdose, I lost three friends to fentanyl overdose by Percocets, fake pills. Mm. All three of my homies had kids. This is why right. I always have said I can't afford vices. Vices cost too much. Whether it's yes. pills, weed, alcohol, whatever the situation is, and it's like I don't. It don't look appealing to me to fall asleep just any and every fucking way. Yes. I'm on vacation and can't go to sleep in a hotel just because it's like I don't know them niggas in that next room. Right, like, I'm on foreign land. Yeah, I can't be on the block out here sleep. I can't tell you how many different times and folks like you're saying with the pill situations where. You go out and see niggas in the craziest situations, or niggas right. getting in the car and making the dumbest situations, or now y'all like y'all did that and nobody was aware of what was going on or the surroundings enough. Everybody stuck on glue. Used to ask niggas when you used to call how many floating bodies in the car because niggas ain't alive; they just in the car. Exactly. So like that, John. It made me click gears on, like, I'm trying to open up a program for kids that lost their parents to drug overdose. Because I feel as though these kids got a story to tell. That would be a that would be a great situation. That would be a beautiful thing. Yeah. That's, not something, that's absolutely something that I never heard nobody doing before. Yeah. Um, and like you said, they, they definitely got a story to tell because there's a whole... Me and my wife had this conversation like a couple months ago and we was talking about like uh, losing a parent because both of her parents are still alive. And I told her, I'm like, it's something that you can't understand until you go through it. Right. Like, it's one of those things where it's just a hole that's never going to be able to be filled. Whether you never knew your dad, never knew your mom, whatever your situation might have been, there's always questions that you can't get answers to. Because they're right. the people, the only people that can really answer that question for you. You might have an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, or somebody that was around, that was close, that was a friend or something, who could tell you all about them, but they can't give it to you. Like, they, it's secondhand information. You exactly. don't know what's, what's really what if you don't get it from the source. Right. So, if, if, if you can get that off the ground, if you need some help with that, please let me know, because that's definitely, uh, that's definitely a major joint that would be a beautiful situation, because I'm always all for like, let's help the kids. Let's try to gear this next generation because we, our generation of parents have dropped the ball tremendously. I don't even want to put that on everybody. We all did that collectively that we fucked the situation up. But it, that that just came about like, because I was thinking like, damn, I can't help my son. He can't talk to his mom. I go and talk to my mom three, four times a day. So, like, that barrier right there is like, wow, like, damn, like, I can't really help you with your grieving process because I don't know what you're going through. Mm. I don't it's a situation know where you can't through. relate. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I'm like, well, shoot. Let me get a bunch of kids together that's going through the same. Let y'all talk it out. Let y'all help each other with ideas. Let y'all be the bridge to each other get. I ain't, I ain't gonna hold you. Um, I love this idea, bro. Um, seriously, like we can put something together and sit down and, and you know try to work no that doubt. out. No that's doubt, no doubt, bro. That's definitely something that pretty much it's not a person in the world who can't relate to having a child that has even if it's just an absent parent, right? Because you might have like the kid who never met their mom, never met their dad. Because it ain't always just didn't meet your dad. Some people never met their mom. And exactly. 
It's something that, shit, yeah, that would be good if they can talk about that at 10, 11, 12, in them years where it's like you think ain't nobody understanding what you're going through because you right. think your mom, your dad, and your uncle, we, you think, I was telling my daughter this the other day, like, do you think I wasn't a kid? <laughs> like, exactly. I wasn't born at, I wasn't they born think at 30. We came out this age. Yeah, I, I wasn't born at 30. <laughs> <laughs> Like, they look at us like we never were they age. Yeah, copy that. What else do you think, though, in that situation? Uh, what else do you think you, uh, you could put together for those type of kids? Like, other than them just having those different conversations with each other, like, is it anything else? Have you formulated more of that idea, or is it just like I got the beginning stages and I kind of just, you know, trying to lay the groundwork? Like, it is a little bit of, like, I... I just came up with it, so it's, like, brand new. But, like, the sky's the limit with that drum, bro. Like, because, like, okay, I got a stepdaughter that lost her father to drug overdose. You see what I'm saying? So, like, it's around me, so I got to do something with it. Mm. I got to. It's like, it's like it's my calling. Like, this became my calling. Mm. So like I can't even in that me. even in this situation. Let me ask you this: How old is she? How old is your stepdaughter? Fourteen. Do her and your son have those conversations? Yeah, that's the beginning of it right there. Is just having them two talk to each other. So now you said what? He would be eleven. She would be fourteen. Yeah. So them two having a shared experience right there that probably kind of connects them two. Right. That's that's how it started for me. Like, damn, they, they did two faces of it right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then as my other homie died from drug overdose, damn, his son could be a part of it. My other homie, damn, his two daughters could be a part of it. You see what I'm saying? It just started gradually picking up. So I did just gradually start coming. Damn, for the little, I, I could, one day I could have like a father workshop. Next week I got a mother workshop for him. You see what I'm saying? You're getting home-cooked meals from a female. You're doing men things with real men. That's what changed our community. That's what, ki that's what killed the community was not having those different types of situations where there's certain things I don't care how, I mean, certain things I can't teach my daughters because I'm not a girl. Right. I'm not a woman. I can't relate to certain things that you're going through, certain things that you feel. I can't relate. I could be the best dad in the world, but there's certain things that I cannot do because I'm not that person. Exactly. Certain things that my wife will never be able to do, like for a boy, because she's not a man. Exactly. So even if you don't have, like you're saying in these situations where we talk about kids that have lost parents, not even just the overdose, just kids that lost parents in general. Um, right. Having that void, like I said, you can't really feel that void, but having talking about it and making it a real situation and not acting like mommy or daddy went off to college and now you've right. made college you've made college this big scary place because mommy never came back from college daddy never exactly. came back exactly but now you're telling me I gotta go to school to further my yeah. education yeah <laughs> like, I said, like I said that's a topic we're gonna get into uh more than yeah, uh more than a dad I'm saying it on the episode so now y'all gotta do it um <laughs> we definitely gonna make that one happen soon but um yeah, if you could put that situation together, though, bro, I would absolutely love to be a part of that. I'd love to help you set that up. Copy. Uh, same shit like when I ran into Quill. Shout out to my man Quill. When Quill was talking about uh, uh, Let Us Help Us, the basketball camp. The, Quill the basketball the camp, right. Yeah. Love them situations, man. I love anything that we can do to try to help them kids because them kids, man, they just, shit's fucked up here. If you hear, exactly. you know, this is... And a, then they wonder why they all running around shooting shit up. Like, that's yeah. what I was getting to. Like, if you hear it and you know Philly is crazy right now. Um, if you're not, you might have seen this shit on the news or read these stats. Like, man, we need to do something to get these kids together. They took everything from them and ain't giving them no alternative. Yeah, the after school programs, they closed half of the damn schools and built condos on all of them, yeah. Right, you see what I'm saying? So, like, what what is it for them to do? So like but that, and, and, dumb shit. Yeah. In some sense, like I don't blame them. Because at the end of the day, like we all were kids. So our level of things to do bad wasn't their level to do. But everything evolves. Yeah, the access that they got is different than the access that we got. And now it's all about 
get on the internet and show everybody what you're doing and how you're moving. When we was right. coming up, it was all about don't ever show nobody how you do and what you're doing. Right. You see what I'm saying? So like times evolved. But plus like you didn't have no plus you didn't have an HD fucking camcorder in your pocket at all times. At all times. <laughs> Like so, like it's 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 crazy, but like I don't I don't blame them. Me and my it's crazy, man. My baby, I was just talking about it the other day. She like, um, <clears throat> you think like these kids nowadays? I'm like, yeah, like that's that's why I relate to them, like because nobody is thinking like them. Everybody is so quick to shun them. Oh, what are you doing with it? Like, no, at the end of the day, see why this person like this. You see what I'm saying? See why young boy fighting all day. Don't just cast him away. Oh, you bad. Like, get off. No, like, it's, it's a problem. It's a, it's, it stems from somewhere. The problem starts from somewhere. No, it's just, just one of this. Wake is, up a problem, child. This is the repetitive thing I always give people, man. It's bad old heads. Yeah, if you don't definitely. Have good old, if you don't have good old heads who are guiding you in the right direction or not just letting you be a part of the dumb shit, they looking right. out for your best interest and not their best interest. That's a good old head. Most of these and not kids only that, old, old heads. Your old head can't be two, three years older than you. Yeah, he's not, not an old head. He's old a parent. Head. Yeah. That's your but that's what I'm saying. People. That's what I'm saying, though. If you're looking at this dude like he's your old head, then we've already, we got a problem here. You can't be right. 15 and your old head is 18. He ain't like, got no, that shit experience. equal. You'll be that age <laughs> like, in three years. Like, no, nigga, y'all just was in math together. Who you talking about? <laughs> y'all just cut like, classes together. Like, no, that's right. not your We just was talking like, about this before we started the show, like, the ages of all of the people. Like, I never really dealt with the niggas that was my age. That's why all my friends is in their fucking 40s and got grandkids and shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, <laughs> because those was the type of dudes that I dealt with because niggas would be like, no, nah, you can't do this. Like, exactly. But like Proper I said, that's diamonds. all about... But that's all about them looking out for your best interest and not their best interest, which is a whole other topic for a whole other day. Um, yes, it is. Before we close this one out, anything that you could say though, like about these the, the different the overdoses and all of that different shit, like anything that you want to say to look, nigga, you got to get off that type of shit. But I mean, you can't yeah, help somebody like, want to help themselves. Copy that, like that's true. But like at the end of the day, a lot of people want to. Like I, ain't, I I'm a firm believer, and a lot of people want to. It's it's just coping mechanisms for some or they don't know where to start or where to turn to or I, I take it further than that the trauma that everybody deals with on an everyday basis you see what I'm saying like it even down to our kids our kids got phones in their hands all day watching people get killed do if we know it or not they on Instagram they done seen somebody get killed that's traumatic Mm -hmm. So as they grow up, like they're finding ways to cope with all of the stuff that they see in on a daily basis. You shouldn't have to be desensitized to death at 11 or 12. At all. You see what That's I'm saying? That's something like, that you get jaded on in your later years, not when you're right. a fucking preteen. Like, like, you don't know nothing about the world, but you know, hey, look, I ain't scared to die. Like, that's, that's, that's scary. Yeah, that's not a, yeah, that's not a good thing for you to be saying. Copy that. Like, that's scary. So, like, it, but, like, a lot of people, like, they got to stop it, yo. Like, but, like, I ain't going to make it seem like it just hit our community. Like, no, like, it been going on for the beginning of time. Like, yeah. but, like, it got to stop, yo. Like, or get a hold of it. You see what I'm saying? Like, like, I don't, it, it, it has to, like. You see somebody doing it that you love, you like try your hardest to put your arms around them, yo. Because that's all it really be sometimes, like a, a caring conversation. You don't know what it'll change. Nigga, sometimes a nigga just need a hug. Right. That's why like I always I'm, tell people, like, don't ever just when you ask somebody, is they cool? And they, yeah, I'm all right. Are you really cool or is you just saying that? Like, right. And that's my thing. People like, yo, bro, you cool? Like, are you asking to know or are you asking to care? Mm -hmm. Because it's a big difference. Like, if, if you want to know if I'm cool, like, if I'm not, are you pulling up on me? Yo, bro, let's sit down. Call me. Yo, let's talk about this. Like, mm -hmm. what's going on? Or are you just asking, oh, all right, you cool, all right. 
You don't care. Copy that. Um, let's let's let, start with Darren. This is the last thing I'm going to throw at you. This is something new that I started doing uh, on the show. Uh, when you hear my name, when you hear somebody say hype, what do you think? Hustle man. I ain't hustle man, like good genuine brother. Like nothing bad could come about that name. Ain't never do me nothing bad. Copy. I mean, I always say you don't know nobody got nothing bad to say about me. If you do that, nigga don't know me. Bro, right. <laughs> like, right. like you like hype is a name like. Like Frank Lucas said, this Pepsi, this a brand name, like hyper brand name, like good person. So like you hear somebody saying something bad or not, you don't, what hype you talking about? I don't it even ain't know that. what hype you talking about because it ain't, it ain't two hypes is what I always right. tell people. <laughs> so like you said something ill, like, you know, it can't be the same person. <laughs> like this to figure your imagination. <laughs> That is another thing I told my wife recently. I'm like, I seen a couple of chicks that I used to talk to and seen the niggas that they was with talking to <laughs> after that. I'm like, this light-skinned fat nigga, copy, you got a fake hype. Oh, shit. <laughs> hey, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, when people say, like, how you say it? Is it like? It's not like nothing else because it's not two of me. So I right. don't know nobody else name I. But, right. um, Nah, that's one of them things where it's like, you know, people always give you your flowers when you're dead. You can't smell them then. You understand? Exactly. So I want to know what niggas think about me now. So right. uh, my daughters listen back to this shit in 10, 12, 40 years, you know what I'm saying? They can get a good glimpse of, oh, this is the type of person that my dad was. This is what people really thought about him. Because don't come, don't come screenshot stealing my flicks and all of that. And now we was the best of friends. And, oh, my God, I can't believe it. That was my man. Right. You ain't say two words to me when I was breathing. <laughs> That's episode you, 90. Neef, I appreciate you coming on, bro. We, no problem, bro. I appreciate you having me. Out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.